Howdy Shapeshifters, Kate Pike here, and today I'm going to show you how to transform into Emma Frost. Jumping right in here to Emma Frost, using a hybrid paint, I am lining out where I need the edges of the fabric to go. Because I'm doing a really tricky illusion with this one in my head already, the key is to go with what you know. Remember that saying whenever you are trying to do any of these projects, go with what you know. So even though I'm planning to be see-through and transparent and like a rainbow gummy bear at the end of this, I know she's going to be wearing clothes and those won't be see-through and those won't be weird. So I'm going to be focusing on that to begin with. Creating these anchor points is really important as well. Scale out the rest of the look. You have to get your lines out. Going in with a hybrid paint at the first pass because it is less likely to crack off. It's really difficult with white paints to get a good opacity. So what I try to do is layer different varieties that won't mix together to try to get the effects that I need. Because this is indeed a white colored paint. I have to really brighten it up. So going in with the alcohol hybrid base airbrush paint underneath will allow me to stack glycerin based paints on top without them blending together and going through. I have very distinctly and in my head at this point that this is a cool colored character, Emma Frost, right? And to bring out her cool, we're gonna go down with cool tones. So a lot of what I'm doing is trying to tone out any of the human flesh tones. Start with the white, start with the blues. We can add the hot pops later, but right now we gotta cool this off. And to get that white white and really tone this down I am having to stack it quite a bit you do have to be very very careful because it might crack and it might flake off so I'm going in very gently with more pigment as much as I feel that I can push it it's better to mix always than to put too much down of one particular kind of paint because it will chunk back into itself having the fabric down I'm gonna go in with a cool blue here and then we must interrupt your regularly scheduled stream for some capital showmanship tooth paint is a thing and I crack it open anytime that there is a lot of fun to be had in a stream the ongoing phenomenons is if I am painting a scary character I have no viewership if I'm painting something very pretty I have too much so I'm just not trying to get anybody the wrong idea or the Barbie bias if they click that thumbnail see something gorgeous because as soon as I smile there will be pointed teeth channel jokes and fun mostly starting to go in with a glycerin based paint for a value scale I'm honing in on where I want to see the back side of the fabric first I know that's where it's going to be the darkest even though I am transparent you will see the back side of that corset that's what I'm trying to represent by pulling the shadow in there first Following that pattern of transparency of seeing the back of it as best as I can with just anchoring where I want things to be a little bit more dense versus a little bit more transparent. I'm smiling a whole ton more because of the teeth. I'm mapping this out as anywhere where light would refract through more, it'll be slightly lighter there can be more light passing through and trying to block that out really, really heavily. More dense and more tight sections, such as the shoulders would be a slightly darker color than say the middle of the torso where more light can get in and start bouncing around inside of the crystal. This is my style. You'll see that I'm going in with very kinetic brush strokes here following the muscle fibers between the fabrics. You'll notice that very particularly in this one is like I have a hard parallel to perpendicular motion of my line work in this. Give it like a kinetic wash. Anything flesh tones will run along the muscle fiber and anything fabric will go perpendicular to that. Very important if you're doing a character that is a muted tone or all a similar tone such as this one and you want to still differentiate between say fabric and flesh. If this is a gray colored paint overall, I want the gray of her clothes to strike in a different way than the gray of her body. Going in with some glycerin based paints now to try to start getting the shadows pulled in properly. I'm gonna go in very, very lightly with nice watercolor hues first. Key to making this pop is gonna be the contrast after, not before. We have to get the shadows laid in properly. I think the sunset kind of feel in my mind already. I know which colors I'm gonna go in with on top of that. Choose your palette as you go, that final product in mind, and I know I'm going for flying through the clouds during a sunset. It helps for confidence during a paint too, which is very important for when you are performing. I know that going in with this yellow Milky gold will be the sun that's reflecting off of me. It won't look out of place because I know the set that I'm putting her in. It tends to dazzle people actually if you are streaming, just plan what you have ahead of time. Often do with my contrast lines, I am chasing the color with a little bit of very, very thick global white. This stuff is like white out. I never do big swaths in this kind of pigment, but it's great for details and dots. 
Because I'm doing crystalline, like a lacquered, very shiny, glossy finish, I know that I have to have really, really fine, refine, and contrast lines. Really crank up the specular value with really popping contrast, but I can't put too many because it's a very soft watercolor paint. So selectively running through on just the most edgy edges, very bright pin lights of white will get that effect. Once my contrast is anchored in, I feel more comfortable tracing in the shadows. Remember, it's a lot easier to go from lighter to darker than darker to lighter. I would always recommend to try to lay down your lights first and then go in with your darks. You learn these lessons the hard way, trust me. If the lessons that I am teaching right now are of value to you or you think they would be for someone else, please consider supporting me on Patreon that, that I may take some more time to make some more of these videos. If you like this beautiful end crystal in product that we made at the end of the paint, look at some of my available NFT art. Going over the lacing, you can see really here when I finally get this last product on that I am using as little white in a white paint as I possibly can. Demonstrating a dual tip brush technique here where you put on pigment with one side and then blend it out with the other. This is as close to real makeup effects that I get. Typically we'll never on canvas blend, especially when you're trying to do a cool comic fill stylized as if you were digital artifact. Blending only happens if you're trying to do something very, very soft. Sake of keeping colors consistent throughout the paint. One of the most consistent things between body paint and real painting in quotation marks is that brushwork counts about the same. Material, the canvas, the timing, nothing else really works, but if you can use a brush, you have a huge advantage. You see here, I go with a medium little brush and use the tip for the fine lines and then swirl around larger sections all at once. If you do any type of painting at all, I would say give it a try. You already have so much of the skill set if you do any sort of fine art. That's how I started. And learning the products and techniques, I will do my best to help you with. You'll notice how hesitant I am with red and blacks because I'm trying to keep this a very, very light paint. Reds and blacks are the most aggressive of the pigments. They'll bleed through, they'll wash through. So I would rather put tiny, tiny little bits on. Not even following a whole line through, a whole edge through, this little dots, kind of like connecting the dotted lines later with the darker, more aggressive colors if I want to. It's almost impossible to take them off. Let's add some color. You'll see me roll around some pinks and some yellows here. I'm not concerned when I'm doing an organic paint like this where the colors end up. I'm just concerned that they are there. Do my best to estimate where the reflections and the refractions will be based on where my source lighting is. And since I'm doing a more ambient piece here, it's just getting scattered through. Rainbow Disco Ball. I love and you will learn to love pieces that are mostly flowy organic shapes because you can get away with this. It's the hard edge lines that are the most difficult. After I have the color in, I'm gonna go try to make these edges look more comic as those are just splashed in, helter skelter colorful. Coming in with a glycerin base paint with a little bit of a wash, I can go and as it is glycerin paint, it is able to mix with the color beneath it. So putting down some more paint on top helps lifts it up. We're gonna get rid of those feathery edges and make it look like a comic fill technique. Digital art, fill tool, but also just with the tiniest little bit of pigment and some water, it can carry the two adjoining sections of color together by softening the edges and giving it a little bit of a middle tone. I'm being generous with the moisture too for all of my whites and all of my blacks in this because I am painting myself as a great character. I don't mind having the more washy blacks and the more washy whites going through and slowly adding value, popping it back and forth, pushing and pulling it into the value scale that I need. And finally, when the hype is right and the light feels right, I'm gonna go in and really refine some of the glossy specular lighting sections that I want. Those swoosh backs, those glosses to kind of overemphasize that this is an organic shape underneath, but also really trying to create depth. You'll see that I put a lot of really hard contrast lights like on my chest there. I have those two little glossy lightings that are just showing the reflections around me over one of the darkest areas. This causes depth and distraction if the effect isn't perfect in behind it. You know? An illusion on top of an illusion. So if both illusions are not perfect for like light source and for depth, I think the two together will make your brain think that you are seeing something in 3D that is also shiny. When you're doing effects like this, it's not about being accurate at all. It's about how the human brain interprets things. I'm inking this super, super cautious. Tiny little dotted lines. It's like teamwork. Every brush stroke working together to create the final effect instead of just one taking over. If I were to run the brush along my neck, say, it would follow the curvature of my musculature in my neck. Getting a ripply wavy line, so it's always better to pick your brush up as you go. Another thing that's really important to keep in mind while you're doing this sort of technical inking is to keep the thinking out of inking. As long as you're not putting too much down, your lines do not have to be perfect. 
work strategy again you can go and add more shadows after or chase colors in and out just a little bit to refine your lines to make them look straight i used to get stuck so long on just getting the one perfect crisp edge then i realized that just adding more lines around them would make it go so much faster on the fabrics in emma you can see that i'm going in a little less heavy-handed with my inks as normal she is white she is gray all these pastel colors the hard contrast won't suit this build very well just a couple of abstract comic style wrinkles around the elbows or where you would imagine fabric falling and rumpling. More than enough for when you're doing a light pastel piece. Finishing details are always kind of where you put your signatures. It would not be a K-Pike piece that was glossy if it did not have gratuitous lens flares. Also, I had a lot of polish because I feel super oily when I'm wearing paint. That extra sparkle, that extra dazzle, that extra little bit of highlights. Technical, this beautiful, this dazzling, let's do it. What do you say? Emma turned out pretty cool, huh? I would like to start out by thanking anybody who has iced me on Patreon and to everyone that has diamond hands on my NFT art. Put product links down below in the description. Be sure to check that out. Be sure to give me feedback in the comments down below and tell me what you'd like to see next. Until the next one, stay frosty.